Hey, welcome to the podcast, Courtney. Hey, man. Thank you for having me. Just to introduce you to the audience, who do you say you are? Well, that's a good question. Though. <laughs> we actually ask that on my podcast a lot. And uh, my answer to it is kind of deep and then it's kind of shallow. So I'm, I'm, I believe that I'm a manifestation of uh, experiences, right? Both good and bad uh, from early on to now. Uh, I'm a good balance of dark and light energy. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm my best and my worst all in all balled up into one being that you see sitting here in front of you, uh, mm -hmm. really built from love and then more so from trauma, right? Cause that's how we, we end up building who we are usually from, from that, mm -hmm. from experiences that produce that. And then we build from there, uh, on a technical side, I'm a man and <laughs> probably as you can see, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a man of color. I'm a black man. Uh, uh, and I'm a lot of different things to a lot of different people. We all are, right? But mm -hmm. uh, the things I like to stand on is being a father, being a son, uh, uncle, cousin, nephew, you know, uh, all these different things. Uh, that's basically who I am. I'm also a content creator, uh, a, an author. Uh, I, I uh, have a company called Illuminated in Thought Motivational Movement, right? I have my own podcast called The Lit Code Podcast. Uh, I'm a, I'm a worker in the oil and gas industry. My all these things, uh, just a big coagulation of me. That's who I am. <laughs> Man, I like it. I hadn't heard yeah. that word in in a while, but I remember the first time I heard that, I was like, ooh, yeah. that, that's uh Oh, no, now that I think about where I heard it, I'm like, that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might be mixing up terms, but I think it was yeah. from Get Out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's dope yeah. man it's it's yeah. very cool very nice to meet you i mean just um yes. seeing you i think i met you through um i want to say we added on facebook and it's like mm -hmm. kind of circling back around like you know how you friend someone it's like do i really know the person so like let me reach out and see and it's like people are very friendly in um entrepreneurial type groups or people be, being mm -hmm. creative and trying to get their ideas out there so I'm glad mm -hmm. I reached out and I'm um, very glad that you answered back. Oh, yeah, man. I'm glad to meet you as well, bro. Good to good to build and, and make connections. You never know how synergistic they can be and what they can lead to on both ends. Very uh, true. So, yeah. And I like that you 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 asked the question on your podcast too, and, and just your answer lets me know that you've been thinking about like where you are, what you do in the world and and just things like that. What what it means like to you to experience life i guess you'd say mm -hmm. yeah i mean i mean if you think about it that that answer that i gave can be for anybody that's what everyone is mm -hmm. just a collection of experiences really uh the way we the way we talk the way we walk the way we see people uh the way we see people from different ethnicities from different cultures it's all based on experience mm -hmm. right and and we're that manifestation after we take that in Mm -hmm. inwardly then we project that outwardly and that's who you see right uh outside of, of stuff that we can't control like like genetics and, and <laughs> all that type stuff but yeah. that's really who we are uh and like i said built from love and trauma and most of the time trauma builds you a little more mm -hmm. than love does because you need to figure out how to survive it right yeah uh, i like to, i like to say the most infants most toddlers their first word is usually hot <laughs> and that's because uh, <laughs> the parents have been telling the baby, don't touch that over there. It's hot. That's hot. Don't mm -hmm. touch it. And something about us, we have to figure it out for ourselves, right? And mm -hmm. then they touch it and they immediately spit that word back out. Hot. And they'll, they'll hold the hand. <laughs> <laughs> but they learn it, right? And they yeah. very seldom to touch that object again. Mm -hmm. And any other object you say hot about, yeah. they'll stay away from it. Mm -hmm. Right. So so that trauma or that that tough, that tough piece, that adversity is usually what builds us more than anything, mm -hmm. uh, whether in a good way or a bad way. So that's really like a generic answer. After I thought about it over time, mm -hmm. that's really what we all are. Now, we're totally different because yeah. nobody experiences the same thing the same way, even yeah. if you're right beside somebody when it happens. <laughs> right. It, it's right, still right. only seen through your eyes. So, uh yeah. 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 I, I've heard the analogy said that um, for people that 
have siblings and they grow up in the same household, it's like you actually grow. You, it could be said that you grow up in a different household because it's like if you're the mm -hmm. firstborn, it's like, OK, the parents are trying to figure out their new parents. And uh, it's like if you're the second born, like the house isn't the same, like there's another kid there, like they're more established. Maybe they have their feet under them, like mm -hmm. depending on how big your family is, by the time it gets to like kid number six, eight, 10, 12, it's like, OK, you, you just like yeah. join the lineup, <laughs> like welcome to the soccer exactly. team. And like however people kind of figure it out, it, it's it's interesting to see because, I mean, to your point, it's that um, trauma seems to be like the the go to word. And maybe for mm -hmm. myself, I, I don't know if I'm being snobby about it, where I'm like, if I've heard a word for like an entire year, or maybe I've been scrolling through mm -hmm. Instagram too long to where yeah. I hear like <laughs> so many people say it mm -hmm. versus like the algorithms kind of picked up on what mm -hmm. I'm leaning towards. I'm like, okay, like for you, like how, how do you define trauma? So by, I'm, I'm big on words. Mm -hmm. So by, by pure definition it's it's uh basically an experience that inflicted some sort of pain or uh grief or uh a cut on your hand would be trauma to the hand so it interrupts mm -hmm. the normal way of things and sometimes it can be in a harsh way right. uh when i say trauma though uh Sometimes I'm talking exactly about that, exactly mm -hmm. about trauma. And sometimes I'm just talking about adversity, basically, when something didn't go your way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that builds us more than anything. Because some people, if if a coach told you, hey, man, you're not going to make the team, you're not good enough, mm -hmm. some people will quit. Yeah. And that'll be a reason they never play sports anymore. They start to tell themselves certain things like, I'm unathletic. They mm -hmm. never try it again. And mm -hmm. some people go in the lab right and they and they go hard and then you get your michael jordans who yeah didn't make the, the varsity team at first right and then he, he, he took it personal and he lives on to be the greatest basketball player to ever live depending on who you're talking to uh right. <laughs> but that's what i mean uh i just i just say it to group it because i like to say things that anybody can grab when they yeah. hear uh um, that makes sense. And I like yeah. the way you ex you expressed it and explained it because I, I think I was maybe being a little bit in my head, but I, I, I guess I was like, hey, help me help me kind of make sure we're talking yeah. about the same thing, because I'm like, I know there's an importance to it because. Um, like to to how you presented it, it is like something that gives you an option, and I like mm -hmm. how you also grouped it with um with love to where they seem like they would be, they'd be opposites. And in, in the sense of like, like, why did you pair them together? So I paired them together because of that very analogy I gave about the child mm. touching something and it being hot, right? Uh, where the first thing they're going to do is turn around and seek attention from somebody mm. that loves them right now. Unfortunately, some children don't have that. So now they have to build this, super person on their own that can deal with trauma mm -hmm. and it, it and they know I, I don't have anywhere to run to for this so i'm just going to be this hardened individual i don't mm -hmm. i don't experience pain you know yeah. so the the uh presence or absence of love also builds who you are you mm -hmm. can kind of tell sometimes you can tell people who grew up in two parent households versus people who may not have had one or the other around mm -hmm. that's go that's gonna ultimately no matter how much you try to say it won't or how successful they become or whatever it's still gonna either deprive them or arm them with something they're yeah. either gonna be missing something or they're gonna have it based on one of those missing and then some have none mm -hmm. right and then you can tell those people are usually a different way uh right. there's a saying i have in the book a saying that we use always end in wise and if you if you spell that word out w-a-y away wise at the end right mm -hmm. so there's always a why behind the way uh, and sometimes, most of the time, love and trauma has something to do with that why, right? Mm -hmm. And then it makes you have ways based off of something you experienced back in the day. Uh, let's say a mother who may have been molested as a child, mm -hmm. her kid's probably not going to get to go spend the night or, or have many sleepovers or slumber parties. Right. Why? Because of that. She doesn't right. trust anybody to be outside of her, her scope. She wants to know 
mm-hmm. that they're safe and that they won't have to endure that trauma, that right. adversity that she that she did, even though they will have their own traumas that they have to figure out. We'll right. we'll right. create them out yeah. <laughs> thin air sometimes. Yeah. Uh but but the great thing about it is uh balance is law to me. So where there is adverse or trauma, there's also a great chance for triumph, right? Mm. Uh there's a great chance to achieve because now I'm gonna grow. Mm. Somehow or another. Uh I told you earlier before we started recording, I'm from rural south, right? Uh grew up around a lot of farmland. Mm. Uh I know if, if you spent time around the area, you told me you probably saw some fires <clears throat> uh, with these people burning off these crop fields. Mm-hmm. Now, these crop fields probably just produced the millions of dollars worth of whatever they just had, but they're going to set it on fire, yeah. right, to to burn those weeds off, burn off anything else that was growing. Then they're going to disc it up, right? <laughs> so mm-hmm. they're going to cut it up. Yeah. And then they're going to come plant these seeds in it. But then after they plant those seeds, they're going to actually pour manure on them, <laughs> right? So they're yeah. going to pour crap all over it, yeah. right? And they're going to spray poison all over it. And uh, you're probably thinking like, well, why, why are they taking it through all of this stuff that seems bad for it, right? Mm-hmm. But after a while, you'll start to see stuff budding up. And if it's corn, a few weeks, you'll see what was once a one-foot plant. It'll be seven feet tall, mm-hmm. sprouting right. corn all over the place. <laughs> but it had to go through all of that to get to this. Yeah. Right. So uh Michael Jordan, for instance, when that coach told him he couldn't do it, he he purposely put himself through a whole bunch of trauma and adversity, meaning mm-hmm. physically. Yeah. Because he probably ran until he vomited and he caught cramps and he was bleeding and throwing up and doing all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But it all worked out at the end because each day he was growing more and more. Yeah. So uh part of my thing is getting people to embrace this trauma and adversity. As mm-hmm. part of the story, as a good necessary part of the story, as a matter of fact, because if it didn't kill you, you beat it, right? Right. A lot of people like to omit it mm-hmm. from their stories and try to forget about it, yeah. sweep it under the rug, so to speak. But then you, if you're walking through the house and you swept some under the rug for so many years, it's, it's piling up, and now you got this big, <laughs> this big obstacle you can trip over because right. you, you're not processing it. You're just trying to hide it under the rug, and it never goes away. So if you accept it. Mm-hmm. Right. And you use it as part of the process. Now we don't have that problem of it haunting us and telling us you don't deserve this because this happened back in the day. You don't yeah. deserve this because you come from poverty. Or you come from this. Your parents were alcoholics, drug addicts, whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. If you use it as part of your story to say, oh, yeah, all that happened. This happened. That happened. That happened. But look at me mm-hmm. in spite of. Right. Right. Then then you're acting out of service to someone else without even knowing it, because there's somebody else with a similar story. Not exactly the same, but they face some stuff and they have some questions, like, can I do in spite of, Mm -hmm. and you making that a part of your story and being a testament is evidence for them, right? To let them know where I can. So that's why I grew them together long time. I I drift off sometimes, but no, you're you're right on it. That that makes sense. And when you explain it like that, it, it reminds me why I hear it so much and why people bring it up because I think part of it is like being of the internet age or being where we're talking about AI and different technologies Mm -hmm. and things like that, that you can use it in the wrong way and you can use it in the right way. Like where Mm -hmm. I see, like I choose to like different features on Instagram, for instance, where now it Mm -hmm. has a thing where it's like, are you interested in this? Are you not interested in like, you can like Mm -hmm. stuff and things like that. And now it kind of gives you more control to where I'm like, okay, it helps for me to see the inspirational things, the motivational things, the Mm -hmm. um, therapists that show up online or the people that give um, information from their experience to say, hey, this is, these are some things that are helpful. Like if you're going through this, like here are some green flags, here are some red flags, here are some Mm -hmm. things to um, just take in yourself and actually go through the process like don't just come to get an answer and be like okay hey i figured it all out it's like no it's this life thing is a constant process and the fact that many people are taking on the um the traumas the Mm -hmm. things that have been swept under the rug and especially you talk about like 2020 like it's is a whole lot of like okay what's going on like 
what do we do now type thing. And it really, um, I guess some would say like a coming to Jesus moment where it, for some, it's like things may have taken a turn for the worse, but I, I've seen myself even get up in a way to say it like, okay, what am I going to find to, or what am I going to do about where I, I find myself? Am I going to lay down and just be defeated? Or am I going to get up and say, okay, let, let me do something. And and to your yeah. fact, like kind of going back to the Michael Jordan example, I remember um, spending time with my mom over the pandemic. And one of the things she encouraged me to do was that it's just this reminder where it's that you have to be like, you have to care for yourself, but sometimes to care for yourself when it comes to like physical activity, you have to be willing to do violence to yourself where it's like, okay, oh, it's comfortable for me to lay in this bed. No. Okay. Let me rock. If I got to rock and forth and I'm just going to walk out to the mailbox or like, I'm going to do this thing consistently. And it was just like going to the track and going for a walk for an hour or 30 minutes, like do 12 mm -hmm. laps around. And it was like, I don't want to do it. I want to be comfortable. I want to sit inside under the covers and just scroll, watch mm -hmm. YouTube, <laughs> chill, do, do nothing else. Maybe I'll do some editing, but like <laughs> that yeah. quickly, I was just like, this isn't my forte. <laughs> but yeah. It's like, sometimes you got to make yourself do something in order to get, get past that, like that hump. And mm -hmm. At some point in time, you keep tripping over that carpet. You're going to either like yell at it or you're going to have to yeah. look at it and be like, okay, like mm -hmm. who put this here? Okay, I, I yeah. put that there. Let, <laughs> I'll me, put it let, there. Me, <laughs> let me clean that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, I'm, I'm big on what we take in. Just like you mentioned, all the different stuff that's on the internet now and on social media. You mentioned some of the good things. There's a lot of bad stuff on there too. Uh, mm. We grew up on a lot of different types of music. <laughs> right and some of that music uh taught me to do some things that I look back on now and I know that wasn't necessarily right right not the right way to look at things but mm -hmm. I still lift I still lift weights now uh and when I go in that weight room when I have to do 10 miles on that bike sometimes I need to tap back into that music because mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what needs to to drive me because because namaste me won't you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> the piece for me, mm -hmm. I can't go in there and let him maneuver around because when that set gets hard, yeah, he'll say logically, because he's a, a very logical person, he'll say, okay, that's enough. <laughs> well, the other me, that me that I had to subdue, that I yeah. talked about earlier, built from trauma, mm -hmm. I need to, I need to beckon him, hey man, come here, come help yeah. me get these last two reps out <laughs> because, because he's going to talk to me in a certain type of way. You know, yeah. he's going, he's going, he may, he may do things that most people think of me. He may call me weak. Mm -hmm. He may, he may uh, say some nasty stuff to me, but yeah, I'm going to get it off of me. Again, he was built through trauma. He mm -hmm. helped me survive at a time. Now the thing about that is uh, we have an episode where we say when Superman becomes Clark Kent's kryptonite, right? So there, there came a point in time when I wanted to be a father. Mm -hmm. and the husband and other things where well, that guy just don't he don't work in this side on this side of things he'll destroy all of it because mm -hmm. he because he comes from a different lane of life right and yeah. so subduing him is is a big part subduing that person you built out of trauma is a big part of us evolving into this this next phase we want to go into yeah. uh my my partner Edgar Jones right is my first cousin mm -hmm. Edgar was a clumsy kid growing up, got picked on a lot, right? Uh, one day he learned that hitting back worked, right? <laughs> <laughs> and from that, he became, after genetics, like we talked about, genetics kicked in. His grandfather was probably 6'7 and 280 pounds. He's a big man. So before you know it, junior high on in the high school, Edgar's 6'3, 240, mm -hmm. cut. <laughs> and uh he uses this this work ethic and nobody's gonna beat me or pick on me anymore type attitude mm -hmm. to make it all the way to the nfl went to a small school in college didn't have a bunch of skill but he had that that he yeah. built right and he played seven years in the league right mm -hmm. and he's getting rewarded for being this barbaric type guy yeah. this guy that he built yeah and then all of a sudden it's over right mm -hmm. and he has to go be a husband and try to 
work his way into corporate America somehow and be a father <laughs> and all this stuff. And that guy just, he don't fit. So yeah. he had to do a lot of work conquering that guy. And mm-hmm. the way he conquered him was to revisit why he was built in the first place, mm-hmm. right? Revisit some of the traumas about his, his father maybe not being around like he wanted him to, about right. people picking on him and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And basically, usually when we do build that, it's to protect that child. Right? We're building it from, from early on. Mm-hmm. So he had to go uh, kind of let that child know it's okay. Now, yeah. we, we, we beat that. And now it's okay for you to go off into the corner and let, let, me, let me drive now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and so he, he's worked on that. And, and three or four years removed from it, he's, I mean, he's half of lit, right? He's helping mm-hmm. to push this... Uh, this message that we try to push on a daily, uh, yeah. but it's because he did that work, right? right? To go back and and treat that trauma. And and again, the reason I paired it, you have to go treat that guy you be, you built out of trauma because now you're trying to build stuff out of love, hmm. right? And so people did love him along the way. And yeah. so now you have to kind of dive into that more to beat that, right? To beat that traumatic guy. We call right. it, <laughs> we, we call it our gremlin. <laughs> right i don't know if you remember the movie gremlins i but didn't watch three. it but I, I i know about i'm either thinking about the gremlins or i'm just thinking about those creatures you don't feed at night that's it i'm happy you said it because i was just about to get into the rules right three rules <laughs> yeah that he that that the guy who sold them what they call a mongoloid was end up being gremlins he mm-hmm. sold them gizmo he gave him three rules one rule the first rule was really how you defeat it he said mm-hmm. do not expose the mongoloid to light Second rule was do not feed it after dark. And then the third rule was don't expose it to water. Hmm. In other words, don't fertilize it, right? <laughs> because if you know the movie Gremlins, if you pour water on it, they grow out of control. Hmm. If you feed that dark side of you, it grows out of control, hmm. right? Uh, if, you, if, you, if you fertilize it, it grows out of control. If you feed it after dark, hmm. well, to me, uh, your dark side roams more when it's nighttime because he feels like he's under the guise of darkness, right? He can he can maneuver without being seen much. And yeah. then you go to sleep and you go from our conscious world into our subconscious world, right? Mm-hmm. Have you ever have you ever watched a movie, a horror movie maybe, uh, and you went to sleep watching it <laughs> and then you nope. have a, nope. you, you hadn't, <laughs> I'll, I'll well. Pass. Oh, I, I have, not, but I, I regretted it and it kind of reminded it, me that's why I don't I'm, watch horror movies. I got you. I'm, I'm happy you, you said it though. <laughs> Think about this. Yeah. You went to sleep thinking about that movie mm-hmm. and then you started to dream about that movie in your subconscious mind. <laughs> yeah. And everything that happened in the movie was 10 times worse than the dream. Oh, now, you, now you wake up with it on your mind. Yeah. So think about that, right? Think about if I go to sleep mad about tomorrow's Monday. Dang, I hate Mondays. I'm going to have to go to. And I went to sleep with that on my mind. Mm-hmm. And I dream about it, right? And everything goes to hell on that Monday that I dreamed about. And then right. I wake up on that Monday. Well, I'm automatically starting that day on the wrong side because I fed that gremlin overnight, right? right? So like the you first created rule, the issue. I created it. The first rule, though, mm-hmm. is exposing it to light mm-hmm. or love. Right. And that's how you killed him on, on the movie. Uh, <laughs> he did expose the water and all these other gremlins budded off and strike was the main gremlin that took over. He had a whole gang. They took over New York City. And yeah. the way they beat him was they broke the windows and the sunlight came in and fried them all. Basically, Man. the only way to interrupt that darkness or that traumatic built you is by exposing it to light. Right. right? To love, to, to good things. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. I've, I've ventured sense. off again, but you no, know, no, you're, you're not venturing off. You're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're taking me right where I want to go because it's yeah. like, to your point, um, you have to be able to strike that balance, especially like, at least what I imagine, like being, being a man, becoming a man, becoming a father, essentially, it's like, you're mm-hmm. the one that, um, is like the, the foundation of your family, because it's mm-hmm. that part of it I've heard said you do want to be a monster, but you want to be a monster under control because it's under like, if, if you're not a monster, you can't protect your family protect. or those that you love from the monsters. Like mm-hmm. if there's not enough of a monster in the house, like the, the ones outside can just come in and kind of take whatever. And yeah. I think to your point, it's like, I, I, I grabbed this book recently or I grabbed it yesterday 
And mm -hmm. I'd read it a few years back. A friend had given it to me and it was called No More Mr. Nice Guy. And I kind of mm -hmm. grew up with the mentality of thinking that, oh, to be Christian or to be nice was like, was the thing to do. Like, just be nice, mm -hmm. be kind. Don't bother anybody and nobody would bother you. But like you mentioned, like, sometimes hitting back works because people will say, okay, this person's just like soft, monotone, mm -hmm. shy or whatnot, like whatever terms it'd be like, okay, this is someone that can be taken advantage of, but it's like, you can still be kind, but nice in the terms of like a nice guy. It's like, it's someone that appears one way, but then if they don't get their way, all of a sudden all hell breaks loose mm -hmm. and it's like oh you weren't the person that i thought you were because it's like you said you were willing to do something but the moment that thing didn't go your way you just mm -hmm. switched up and it's like are you that person or are you not and, and <laughs> yeah. sometimes it, it comes in the, to like you can be masking something and mm -hmm. the worst thing that you could have is someone that's weak in the sense mm -hmm. of like they don't say what they mean and they they don't they're not up front about what it is that they want and the moment they don't get what they want they're very quick to stab you in the back and that's mm -hmm. like the worst the worst type of person you could keep around you like man or woman but it's like to your point it's you have to be able to create the monster whether it's through trauma or like adversity making yourself physically do things like mentally taxing like build yourself mm -hmm. up almost like a david Go david goggins when i think about like the message that he puts out there's like learning to bulletproof your mind and to make yourself mm -hmm. do the things that you're not willing to do at times because when you can become a monster but then you can also be one that knows how to love and knows how to provide love to people it's like okay you're not just this this um caveman so to speak mm -hmm. it's like you've you've gone beyond that and there's more to you than just like what meets the eyes like there's onions mm -hmm. to you there's layers to you and things like that so that that's a beautiful message because if you if we don't talk about it it's like people kind of just fee fi fo fum it's like yeah. oh it's like that's, <laughs> that's all these guys are about but like there there's a lot there and i i like yeah. that yeah, it's it's better to be a warrior in the garden than it is to be a gardener in a war. Mm. Uh, meaning, I can be this peaceful person, this garden, and tend to my garden, but I'm also a warrior. Versus, I don't have any of that skill. I'm just a gardener, and all of a sudden, I'm at war. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you 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 have to have both, but you have to be able to control the monster because a monster doesn't care what yeah. it attacks. Right. It just it just wants to attack. It's kind of like the movie Venom. Have you, have you seen it? The, mm -hmm. the DC character Venom. Yeah. Well, until he controls Venom, wants to eat everybody's head off all the time. <laughs> and he's talking, let me eat him, let me eat him, let me eat him. He's telling him, no, you can't. Yeah. Right. Until he controls them and only brings them out when he needs to use them. Mm -hmm. That's when that's when stuff works how it's supposed to work. Uh, because part of being a man and protecting also is being able to choose your battles. Yeah. Right. Uh, being able to pick what you're going to spend in the zone, being able to know your ammo. Is, is this a problem that deserves a 22 cal ammo? Or is this a problem that deserves a bazooka? Mm -hmm. Because if I'm a monster, I'm just going to bazooka everything. And then a bazooka size problem comes along and I'm all out of ammo for that because yeah. I've been spinning it up, you know? So yeah. Uh, yeah. controlling that monster is the, is, is the key. And like I said, uh, actually getting back to how you how you came up getting back to that love side of things is what's going to help you actually control it. Right. Mm. Cause that's the only thing that can interrupt it is interrupt darkness is light. Right. right? And uh, you want to leave with that more, but it is good for us to talk about it because balance is law again. So as much great stuff as we, as we have in this world, there's mm. a lot of nasty, evil stuff here. <laughs> there's there's yeah. an underbelly. There's, there's your yin and yang, right. Mm -hmm. uh, night and day. It's, it's, complete opposites on both ends. And sometimes you can control your reaction to it at all times. You you are, you have that dominion and power over self, but mm -hmm. sometimes that other side intersects. Sometimes your children are gonna follow the wrong crowd. 
Sometimes uh, you may come into work and you're being as peaceful as possible, but Chuck over here had a bad day and he wants to bring darkness to you. Yeah. Now, a lot of times you can you can defend it with light, but sometimes Chuck just got to know that, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> in you here, chose Chuck violence is, today. Huh? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's something that's willing to meet that. I'd rather mm-hmm. not, but it's there. Sometimes people have to know that to respect you. Mm-hmm. Uh, somewhere along the line, I didn't, I wasn't as afraid of my mother anymore because it's just part of growing up being a young man. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, she can't really hurt me at, at a certain point. But old daddy, if I heard that truck pull up, right, <laughs> to this yeah. day, I'm a bigger man than my father, right? I, I, he's, he's older now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still don't, I, I never test him. Part of that is a little fear, mm-hmm. right? And a little of that fear is going into respect yeah. or, or not even fear, but so much so much now is knowing that if I did take it there with them, there's mm-hmm. <laughs> there's results that come along with it yeah. that I don't know if I'm willing to have to deal with. Win, lose or draw. I yeah. don't want to. Like there might be only one. So it's like, yeah. I don't know if you want to take it there. You don't want to take it there. So uh, just controlling it, though, controlling yeah. it, leading with that light. That light side is more tactful. Right, yeah. then, then that monster is the monster just wants to attack all the time. And you got to keep him or her under wraps, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> right <laughs> and they right. come out when you want them to. Somebody breaks into the house and tries to harm my children. I don't want to meet them with nice stuff. Like, we have to, <laughs> yeah. It's like, let's talk this <laughs> out. Why, why are yeah. you in here? Why, why are you rubbing through my cover? Yeah, it's can like... you stop? Can you stop choking my wife for a second so we can talk? <laughs> No, that's not going. <laughs> that's not going to work. So, <laughs> oh man! But tell me, tell me a little bit more about the lit, the lit podcast that you have, and and even as I read it on you, and we're talking about light, I'm like, I could almost read light into that. Yeah, yeah. So lit is a term that the younger people use now to mm-hmm. to talk about when something is. We probably would have called it height back in the day, or or. or man it's jumping we probably would have said that the, they'll say the part is lit that mm-hmm. concert was lit or whatever so we wanted to use a word that that kind of fit into what the youngsters are familiar with but it's it's an acronym mm-hmm. stands for illuminated in thought <clears throat> uh illuminated has been made obsolete by somebody above my pay grade but <laughs> <laughs> historically means to bring light to or to mm-hmm. light right in now originally the end the i it wasn't such an important part we just needed something to connect illuminated with thought Mm -hmm. but then i watched a a podcast with said guru on it he was sitting with mike tyson and and evan and Mm -hmm. uh he said he simply evan simply said the only way out is in right Mm -hmm. and after i thought about that after i told you earlier we we experienced all this stuff inward first Right, and then it right. projects out. So that light that we talk about, sometimes you have to go inside into your darkness to go find that light, right? And then you exude it outward. Mm-hmm. So in is a very important part of it. The only way out is in. So yeah. every even even your podcast, right? Uh, it's my time was something that was formed here first inside. Right. Nobody could see it. Yeah. And you saw how you wanted your logo to look. And I don't know if you made it yourself or you got with a designer and you threw that idea around and it, it existed inside first and then boom, you had it in your hands. Mm-hmm. That's how powerful we are. That's how magical we are. So illuminated in thought. Uh, we don't want people to think that you're lit because of your rings or watches or your, your shoes, your clothes, your cars, all this stuff is fleeting. Mm-hmm. All this stuff will one day perish. But if you're illuminated in thought first, if mm-hmm. you're leading with your thought process, if you can flip your mindset, uh, if you can shift your mental paradigms, right? Mm-hmm. Now, leading with that light will open up so many doors you couldn't see before. Right. You couldn't see them because you were in darkness, right? It's hard to see in yeah. darkness. So uh, our motto is that we like to meet people where they are, <clears throat> enlighten that thought process to light the paths to where they want to go, right? Uh, so I'm not, we, we don't try to force anything on anybody. Mm. Uh, I, like to, I like to say that usually the major chain restaurants are stacked right on top of each other in most cities right you got right you have mcdonald's by burger king by kfc popeyes whatever and uh they cook the same thing every day mm-hmm. 
They had their commercials and stuff, I and mean, they try to market, but they cook the same thing every day. They don't go out there and force anybody to come through. Right. Somebody's going to smell what they're cooking or have a taste for it that day, and then mm-hmm. they're going to come through and stop by, right? Yeah. And I think that's very important because when you try to force people to be where you are, mm-hmm. right, you try to force their, their why to be, or their ways to be based on your why, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. when you lose people. So if I try to go force you to, hey, man, you're not living right. You need to do this. You need to do that. It's not going to work. Because right. most of the time, uh, when I self-reflect, there was a time when I was doing stuff that I thought was completely right. Mm-hmm. And it was wrong. But in my mind, it was right. So I didn't want to hear whatever anybody was trying to tell me. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear that. You wrong, not me. Mm-hmm. Right. And most of the time, that's how it is, especially with adults. Uh, so we we just put out what we put out. Right. right. And hopefully that sparks some or lights some, ignites, illuminates, whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna call it. I have yeah. a it's hard to see, but there's a light bulb on, on our original logo, mm-hmm. and there's a little flame over here on this one. If it turns on that light or if it lights that ignites that little flame in you to start thinking different, because mm-hmm. that's where the change is gonna come from. A mindset shift. It won't come from, oh, I read that. I like to say uh <laughs> that that. No matter what your belief system is. So so God, Buddha, Allah, and the little mermaid daddy can sit on your couch, right? <laughs> <laughs> and they can give you all the secrets to life. Yeah. And they can leave. And if your mindset did shift and you don't apply it, mm-hmm. it don't matter. You have a great story to right. tell. Nobody will believe you if you don't get it on tape. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> but you have it wasn't a great recorded, it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, it didn't happen. You have an awesome story. Yeah. But nothing would change unless you change it, right? Mm-hmm. So we want to illuminate that thought process, man. And that's what we built it on. We, uh, we are, we're working on writing curriculum for uh, people in leadership roles in schools. Mm-hmm. Also writing curriculum for, for children who are coming into leadership roles, like, like let's say, uh, ninth to 12th grade, mm-hmm. right? They're about to embark upon their journeys in life. And then I also have the book, my book that I wrote, uh, Understanding Your God of Your World, uh, it's mm-hmm. actually how we connected. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> we 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 have Edgar goes around, uh, like I said, he is an NFL veteran. Mm-hmm. He goes around and does motivational speeches at different places. Uh, I write speeches. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I help uh, <laughs> organize ideas and thought and put it into words mm-hmm. in ways that people can digest them. Now, the podcast is the lit code. And then when you think of the word code, usually it's people saying something in a certain type of way uh, that most people don't say it or, or, or barcodes. You can scan it and see right. exactly what people are made of or, mm-hmm. or something being decoded, right? The Morse code is a way to communicate, right? right? So uh, we tend to think that we communicate in a way that we simplify life's complexities. Right through through simple everyday things that you can just think of that you do on a daily basis mm-hmm. or simple scenarios, right? Uh, like when when stuff is getting chaotic in your life and you're trying to do all these things to fix it, mm-hmm. right? And you're really just muddying it up. I just posted a story about when I was younger and uh, in Louisiana we would go crawfishing, right? So mm-hmm. we 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 get in trouble a lot because we'd have to steal some of Mama's stockings. Or, or auntie's stockings and we had to steal either a wiener or some bacon out of the refrigerator mm-hmm. and find us a stick and some floss or her or some of her thread, right? Mm-hmm. Tie it off, tie the meat inside of that stocking and tie the other into a stick and we'd go out and catch crawfish. Well, sometimes you can walk out into the edge of the pond if it hadn't been raining much, mm-hmm. right? And you can see exactly where all the crawfish are. Mm-hmm. But as you start to catch them and step around, the water gets cloudy. And the more you move, the cloudy it gets. Mm-hmm. So the best thing for us to do used to be to sit still for about five minutes, right? <laughs> Let all that chaos settle. Mm-hmm. And now you can see which way to move because not only were there crawfish there, that's a water moxes in Louisiana, <laughs> right? There's some, there's some spots in there that are, that are a lot deeper yeah. than you think, right? But you can see, you can kind of see the drop off, right? Mm-hmm. But if, you, if you're moving around in that chaos and you're just trying to fix it, sometimes you can step on something you didn't mean to step on. Right. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you can get in deeper trouble. So just being still, right? Scenarios mm-hmm. like that. That's the kind of stuff we like to say to kind of help people grab it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's where the cold part 
comes from because the way we speak and what we what we like to talk about. So in a nutshell, that's it. That's the illuminated in thought uh business side of things, and then that's the podcast mm-hmm. illuminated in thought. And we we try to bring on uh people from our hometown and people from Edgar's experience in the NFL mm-hmm. and people we've met along the way and just talk about life. Uh yeah. not necessarily about what they've done or what they do, but but how they did it and how life right. was, why they were doing it. And mm-hmm. uh just get people to share stuff, man, because a lot of times we look at people on the internet, social media, and we see the good part of the story, right? We mm-hmm. just see glitz, glam, and oh, such and such is successful, yeah. <laughs> right? And we think that life's just easy for them. It's always been easy and everything was just, they woke up one day and it was like that. And that's yeah. never the case, right? There's a lot of work that goes into that. And sometimes people hearing it from somebody who they put on this pedestal, right mm-hmm. kind of gives them a, a builds a relationship with them to say hey i'm not that far from them. that line between where i am why i am and where they are is razor thin yeah it's just a mindset thing right <laughs> and, they, and they kept going when stuff got hard you yeah. know so that's what we try to do man yeah that's awesome but I guess what, what about can i can i yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> i guess it's my my the podcast in me i'm gonna ask you about it's my time of course uh Cause that's, that was interesting to me. Where did that, where did that come from? Well, the, the title itself for the podcast was kind of given to me by a friend I interviewed on the third episode. And it was Mm -hmm. really a way to encourage myself to really um, carry that. How would you say bravado or courage is to be like, Hey, like you belong here because Mm -hmm. my thought for starting the podcast was to highlight everyday people like people i've met people i've mm-hmm. never met but like someone that you just see walking down the street and it's like mm-hmm. there's there's value in the everyday person as well as there is in the celebrity i mean mm-hmm. i don't want to dismiss celebrities or people that are high profile mm-hmm. it's like they they did what they did they are in their way like mm-hmm. they have a right to that profile but i think sometimes it's like it's easy to look at a celebrity or a president or mm-hmm. like an athlete or someone like that, a business tycoon and just be like, Oh, well, I'll never be. And it's like, mm-hmm. well, your father, your son, your daughter, like mm-hmm. you have people that care about you. Like if you don't have people that care about you, it's easier to like get outside, go for a walk. Maybe you'll meet somebody as you're going to the store or you'll just open up, smile at someone. And like, mm-hmm the world doesn't happen like in an apartment complex where you just have your own space. Like you're mm-hmm. shut out from the world and it just feels like you're isolated and mm-hmm. nothing's going on, but it, it's like, it's easy to connect with people online, but also like actually getting to know somebody trying to make conversations and like, it's mm-hmm. not always recorded, but like in my attempt to get to know other people, I've really had a chance to get to know myself and just be like, okay, I do have other things to offer. And I'm not just a a single thing. Like some people may know me from, okay, he's an engineer or Mm -hmm. he, um, he's from another part of the world, but he's Mm -hmm. like an immigrant, but he sounds American. Maybe he's black. (laughs) Maybe he's like somewhere in between. It's like, yeah, it's like there's so many layers to who people are and i i just thought in asking that question of myself i was able to answer it um asking that of other people i was able to answer many questions for myself and like you said being able to um do that work where it's practicing the self love where maybe it's dealing with some of the past traumas and in the one sense like catering to the child maybe creating a bit of a monster, but Mm -hmm. like being like, okay, hey, we're not just creating something to run wild, but we're um, investing in ourselves to be like, okay, you can give your time to your job. You Mm -hmm. can give your time to a hobby or something like that, but also take time for you. Like when you meditate, um, be conscious of like what you're doing or why you're doing it. That that's kind of my thought behind it's my time podcast. Yeah, that's great, man. That's great. Uh, I I always enjoy people bringing it back to self. 
-hmm. and that and that work that has to be done in self even when you're seeking stuff from somebody else yeah being able to apply it and answer more questions about self because it's so it's so much we don't know right yeah. uh just about self sometimes and about other things so much we don't know and then mm -hmm. acknowledging the fact that i don't know it caused yeah. me to ask questions right but at, at, at the very onset of me saying i don't know it makes me small enough to grow right mm -hmm. i immediately get small enough to grow because now i'm a novice to that mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a baby to whatever it is i'm asking that question about yeah and as i as i figure it out i'm growing right, right. uh and so i again i always say asking questions man that that question why that little bitty three letter <laughs> word <laughs> man it can it can it can get you so far and so deep into things right if you yeah. just ask why even even my kids uh instead of instead of uh chastising them sometimes uh, why why did you do that mm -hmm. and i don't take i don't know for an answer because mm. You 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 got an idea. Even yeah. if you don't particularly know you got an idea, but I'm making them think. Yeah. Right. And then after that, well, uh, do you think that, that was the best thing to do? No. Why? <laughs> right. <laughs> but the more you keep asking that why, <laughs> yeah. And the more you keep asking questions, it it and we're big on asking people, hey man, how you doing? Uh people are it's cliche. So people are automatically say, Good. I'm good, man. I'm good. Chillers. Well, what's what, why is what, what's so good about today, <laughs> right? Because most of the time people not thinking about it, they're just saying something, even if they're having a bad day, or yeah. maybe they're having a great day, but they're not thinking about why it's great, mm -hmm. right? So once you ask that, now they have to ask themselves some questions and reflect on it. Yeah. As you said, sometimes being able to say something can lift so much weight off of them, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people hold on to trauma so long because they've never been able to say that it happened, mm -hmm. right? And never been able to just verbally say that to, right. to spit it out. And <laughs> once they actually see it, it's like, yeah, I can so, breathe. Man, I said that. Yeah, I didn't you know realize what I'm I said that out loud before. <laughs> exactly. But to get there, sometimes yeah. it takes some questions, yeah. right? So, so uh, you asking that question, I'm, I'm assuming, is it my time? And answering it, it is my time. Mm -hmm. Is is a is a great thing. So I, I'm always interested in hearing the stories of how people create. Or how they come up with what they come up with. Uh, yeah, our podcast was born out of conversation between we we've been talking this way forever because we're we're only two years apart in age mm -hmm. and we're and our my my dad is his mother's brother, mm -hmm. so we grew up together. Uh, yeah. and we've been talking this way forever, but of course the pandemic came along mm -hmm. and we're sitting there talking and maybe ten people on both sides say, "Hey man, you ever thought about starting a podcast?" Of course, I'm country. I don't even know what that is, really. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So we started looking into it, and we we started, and we started writing down name ideas and all this stuff, and we got the business straight after we came up with the name, and we we've grown a lot. Got a long way to go. Yeah. But we've but we've grown a lot, man, and we've we've impacted a lot of people. We try to impact people on purpose, not mm -hmm. only on their podcast, but everything we talk about, we try to live it, mm -hmm. right? So. When I meet anybody, uh, I try to lead with my light all the time. Mm -hmm. And I it's evidence that I'm leading with because sometimes <laughs> my wife will get annoyed with, but sometimes perfect strangers <laughs> will come just engage in conversation and tell me stuff that I know they wouldn't tell anybody else. Like they just <laughs> pour out of my wife. I say, you talk too much. <laughs> <You> know, <it's, laughs> just talking to random people all yeah. the time. But I know that's leading with light and that's part of my purpose part of my gift yeah. uh and when you leave with your gift man i heard uh tory hunter said uh ex-baseball player tory hunter said mm -hmm. they can never fire or retire your gift right mm -hmm. and i took it a step further to say death can't even rob you of it because you think about how many like amazing artists we still listen to yeah. uh on music how many times i go back and watch a Malcolm X speech or interview or, or Dr. King or whoever, yeah. right? Uh, even if you if you want to go Muhammad, if you want to go Jesus, if you want to go, uh, 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 let's see, who else? Who is that? Uh, Alexander the Great, whoever you want to think about. Yeah. Mansa Musa, you can, you can go on and on, but something that they had never died, right? Yeah. Their purpose, that gift, it never allowed them to die. So when you're leading with that purpose and that gift, yours being meeting everyday people, 
most mm-hmm. of the people see the good thing about our podcast is we do to a lot of people some of the people we have on are everyday people mm-hmm. to me just because i'm a i'm an empath i kind of see and feel people to me they're amazing <laughs> and yeah. all of us are yeah. uh, they're doing amazing things maybe they may not get the light that the celebrities get so that's part of me bringing them out there but when we do bring celebrity on mm-hmm. our goal is to let you see that the celebrity is also just that everyday person who happened <laughs> to do enough to do something that a lot of people couldn't do for a yeah. while but guess what they all come back to Right, like I said, Elga had to lead the NFL and then become this this regular everyday guy again. Yeah. Right, so they got to come back to the same <laughs> the same path that we've been treading all along. Right, right? And, then, and then you see that everybody is the same thing I live with. Mm-hmm. All that they are too is a big yeah. collection of experiences. That's it. May yeah. have more money, may not. Right, <laughs> they, they may have squandered it. Yeah. Uh, I, I like to say it's it's. I don't like when people get are victims of pedigree power, mm. meaning they see something or a person on paper. So mm. I raise, I, I still raise American bullets and horses and cattle to this day. Mm. Uh, sometimes you can look at this pedigree and see how this animal's bred. And, and on paper, it looks like this would be a great breeding to do and you should produce this offspring. Mm. Sometimes you produce that offspring and it doesn't carry any of the traits that that pedigree says it ought to carry. <laughs> So uh, as, as harsh as it may sound, they may need to be called, sold off. You probably shouldn't introduce them into your breeding, mm-hmm. uh, your breeding programs, you probably sell them to a pet home, right? Because yeah. they don't hold that that you thought you were going to get from it. So mm-hmm. you're seeing uh, such and such as the mayor, mm-hmm. right? That's part of his pedigree. That's on there. Yeah. Uh, so maybe I ought to follow his lead. May ought to follow his action. He may be pissed poor morally. He may <laughs> not be the best person for you to be following or listening to but yeah. you're doing it based on his title his right. pedigree right, right? so I, I like to tell people to look at performance a little more mm-hmm. so all the people that we we bring on their performance tells us that they're good people mm-hmm. even if at one point their performance said otherwise mm-hmm. but they found out how to clean it up and do good things on the back side of it because that's important too all of us are gonna mess up yeah so also knowing that my mess up ain't the end. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the end of the book. It could just be chapter six. Mm-hmm. Well, I messed up a lot. <laughs> but by chapter nine, you can see how that mess up actually sprung me to where I need to be now. Right. Uh, I don't know if you grew up playing on, on trampolines, but we we jumped on the trampoline a lot, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes you had to come down real hard to get that big spring that you wanted to get, right? So. Yeah. A lot of times seeing somebody with that kind of celebrity and star power, right? They usually can fall a little further than we think. We think they did. It looks like <laughs> they fell a little further <laughs> yeah, than we yeah. did. And if they spring back, right? A lot of people take joy in seeing them fall. I like to see what they did after that fall, that they spring back ahead. Mm-hmm. They did. That story needs to be told, right? Uh, and then somebody can, can take that story and relate it to their life again. Yeah. Right. I remember I lost that job and I thought, man, I just bought a new house. I'm talking about personal stuff right now. This yeah, really yeah. happened. I got a new house. I got a brand new baby at home. I got another daughter at home. I just got married. What am I going to do? Mm-hmm. Right. If I would have said in that, then who knows? But I used it. Right. Mm-hmm. Took some time for me to figure out how to use, but I used it. And then it sprung me in the head. Right. So that story needs to be told because it's somebody who just messed up yesterday. Yeah. And they think that's it, right? They don't know what they're going to do. And unfortunately, since social media gives us access, I'm, I'm happy people talk about mental health and depression and all that now, but mm-hmm. it also gives youngsters access to a new crutch in my mind because mm-hmm. uh, we didn't have it. We, yeah. we end up building who we built because we didn't have the luxury of saying, uh, my mom depressed. And, yeah. and her saying, okay, let's go get us, get you some help and calling us and all that. No, it's, it's you depressed. Man, I'm depressed because the bills do tomorrow. You need to get up and do what you got to do. <laughs> and so you had to figure it out, right? Yeah. Now a kid can grab that. Now this is the danger of it. That kid may watch somebody on a video saying that they're depressed. Mm-hmm. Now the person they're watching may have been molested by the father. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, may have, they may have eaten out of trash cans. They may have been in and out of foster homes. 
mm-hmm. right? Beaten on, just yeah. totally treated badly. And they're saying, well, I felt sad and I felt like I wasn't loved at that time. And I fell into depression. Yeah. Now, my daughter can be watching it. And I just told her, no, I'm not buying a $400 pair of Yeezys. Mm-hmm. And in her mind, <laughs> daddy don't love me because he's not giving me the Yeezys. And yeah. she's watching that video. And that person said, I didn't feel love. So I fell into depression. And she says, boom, that's what I got, depression. Mm-hmm. Now I'm depressed. That's right. the danger of it. You see what I'm saying? It's like the Google so, search for, like, hey, what symptom is this? And it's like, here's yeah. your symptom. <laughs> it's like, wait, 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 wait. Let's get some context around this. Like, so, hold up. Let's no, you can't run over there. Like, come on back, come on back. Yeah, I, I think to the point, it's like it speaks to maybe like short form content, but also understanding, like, to your point, I think um, it helps for people to know how to learn. And one of the mm-hmm. things you said earlier about be, learn, like, encouraging questions. And I, I was listening mm-hmm. back to a mentor, and it, they were talking about knowing to learning to ask the right questions and it's Mm -hmm. like a lot of our education has been for me at least it was um memorizing like if you ever tried if you ever seen the the rubik's cube a big thing about it is about um algorithms like you're supposed to memorize certain steps to move it around (laughs) and i was like initially in high school like senior year we got it and I was like, I want to figure it out without looking it up on YouTube. And mm-hmm. I was like, I got to the last step before I was like, oh, okay, I'll look it up. I don't want to be the mm-hmm. only one that doesn't know. But like, there's something to be said going back to the example of like using a physical map or learning mm-hmm. how to do math without having to use a calculator. It's like, of course, there's like long division and things like that. People might say it's outdated or use AI, chat GPT is like, there's a time and place for things, but you want to be able to think and not just be programmed to do, okay, I do this. And then once like the steps don't line up, you're like, mm-hmm. what do I do now? What yeah. do I do now? It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And in learning how to learn or learning how to ask questions, I think it's, it's encouraging to like do something bad. And then if you like in your process of like trying something and you fail, like, it's okay. Then like you were asking your kid, like, okay, then what what would you do next? And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, like, let me look around and see, like, you don't have to like fall into a ball or kind of regress to like, I failed and I don't know what to do. Yeah. Well, like <laughs> everything, like, let me sit over here and just like rock myself to sleep. It's like, it's not always, it's not always an extreme. There's like, there are the dangers of where things can lead if you just become so reliant on not using your brain and questioning things to like inform you, but um, it's just another opportunity for us. And just for people to be like, Hey, like the more access to things you have, maybe it's an opportunity to kind of cut something back to be like, let me go discover something. Like, let me go outside and just walk around my neighborhood or let me, knock on the neighbor's door and say like hey like let me greet you it's like oh okay like wow okay you're from mississippi like tell me about yeah. the crawfish like i've had yeah. the i've had the etouffee and i had the 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 boiled platter but after mm-hmm. struggling with that i was like i'll stick to the etouffee and i i, I don't want to do the the like <laughs> hour of work to get a pound of meat out of like yeah. a five pound platter i'm like i can't do it i can't do it yeah <laughs> Yeah, man, it's it's uh it's great to sometimes I, what I like to call log off mm. uh because uh you do lose sight of of things outside of this this device and yeah. uh, these other devices that we have. So, so we have no we, we hadn't been doing such a great job of it lately, but usually we have no power hour every mm. every day, no power hour in the house where everybody puts the phones in the shoebox. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a thousand piece puzzle, but I have a few of them. Mm-hmm. One that I'm working on now, uh, my son has some smaller puzzles. We have crossword puzzle books. We all do those for about 30 minutes. And then each child has to get up in front of us, in front of the family and tell about their day, their week, mm-hmm. something they learned, something they want to do, yeah. something they didn't like. Uh, and you'd be surprised how nervous they get 
Now it's just standing up when they just have the floor, mm -hmm. but it's helping them to to learn a few things because these uh, devices and the age of technology gives us so, so much instant gratification mm -hmm. that their patience is about that. Yeah, so that's why they, they also <laughs> take they also take instrument lessons because you I need you to know that you're not just gonna get everything yeah. instantly, right? Uh, we were so excited about the onset of the internet that we would wait five minutes for a picture to load back when <laughs> <laughs> right if it took five minutes for this phone to load a picture today i'd be extremely upset <laughs> where does that come from though <laughs> right <laughs> why should i be upset because there's one time it didn't even exist mm -hmm. and life was perfectly fine without it but that mind and yeah. our mental we build I built something to be upset about. That's how I said we'll create trauma out of thin air sometimes. <laughs> we'll, mm -hmm. we'll find something to be upset about. Right. So uh, we do that. We work on those puzzles. They talk about what they have to talk about. Uh, each night after we eat our last meal for the day, we take a walk. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, my son's very inquisitive like I was as a youngster. So he's into nature. My my degree my degree is actually in animal science now. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a NACE coding inspector on the pipelines mm -hmm. now. So I don't do anything that has anything to do with animal science besides still having horses and cattle back home yeah. and, and the dogs. But uh, he's very inquisitive. So he asks questions about this type of leaf and this type of bug. And if it's nighttime, he's asking, how do you know a star from a planet? And we talk about stuff, but he's asking these questions and he's getting interested in something outside of just what's on this phone. Now, right. the thing the phone can do for him though, is the stuff he's interested about. Mm -hmm. I can tell him, hey, when you get in the house, go, hey, Google it on your tablet. And mm -hmm. it's going to give you all this information. Now, the great thing about it is I'm here to tell mm -hmm. him what information is false and what's not, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes a part of the plight of our people is a lot of times that figure me, <laughs> that father's mm -hmm. not there to tell him anything. Mm -hmm. And that's when this can get dangerous because right. every little thing they look at, nobody's there to. I like, We had an episode where we said, uh, we replace the pacifier with a tablet, mm. right? And if you walk away from it, uh, we our brains are more spongy between the ages two and seven ish, and then they are the rest of our lives. We're learning so much at that time. And yeah. if you allow that tablet to teach it, well, you've seen how YouTube can be, right? You can start off on on whatever they're watching, and yeah. that algorithm picks up the last thing that was on, the last thing that was on. Before you know it, they get into some totally dark out of this world type stuff. And yeah. if you're not there monitoring it, then they're out of the way. So a lot of times I like to teach them that it's okay to unplug from this, mm -hmm. right? And to meditate on something. A lot of people think meditating means you got to get on a rug and float. It's just, just <laughs> merely means <laughs> to, to deeply think about that one thing. Yeah, You can do it. I can meditate on something right now while we're talking, yeah. right? Uh, so teaching them how to do that. Mm -hmm. uh teach them how to sit in silence right and to where the silence doesn't run you off some people get nervous about silence most of the time it's adults yeah. because again those monsters and their traumas playing through your head when it gets too quiet and you got to move away from it. you don't want to yeah. fight so it me. feels like torture sometimes yeah it does it does but especially if you hadn't done it in a while it's like oh man, yeah a minute yeah. a minute without yeah. like attention <laughs> or like ooh. yeah but you got to give one on one with self. Self yeah. is the only uh, every when I blink, your 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 world don't go dark. Mine mm -hmm. does, only mine. And so everything I experience, smell, taste, see is only through my world, through me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's part of the reason I wrote that book just to get people back to the power of self. Yeah. Even what God means to you is formulated in here. You formulated, and then what the devil means to you also. And then guess who chooses which one they're gonna follow. <laughs> You do, you. But you got to help yourself get to that point to where you can make that right decision, mm -hmm. right? Uh, to where you know you had that kind of power over self. Right. Uh, now we talked about people interacting with people earlier. A lot of times, somebody can be trying to get you to react a certain way, mm -hmm. and if you understand that you had that kind of power, mm -hmm. you can simply leave them, go home. Yeah. Now, if they try to stop you from going home, then that's when Mister <laughs> Monster gets there. <laughs> get to come out most yeah. of the time they're not trying to stop you from going home right uh, most of the time a lot of people create trauma because we get on these phones and we or we watch the news mm -hmm. right and you you oh, find man. a story that 
rubs you the wrong way. I don't watch it at all. No, I don't. No. I just, I don't. Like I, because... I heard about this submarine thing only by like secondhand, and yeah, I, didn't, <laughs> I wouldn't have heard of it if I wasn't following a um, like a question interaction thing mm -hmm. with a uh, is like mixed martial arts news, and somebody brought it mm -hmm. up, and then one of my coworkers by the end of the day had also brought it up, and I was like, wait, what happened? I was yeah. like, I was, I was listening to one thing at one point, and then they started talking about submarines, and I was like, wait, what? Yeah. And then it kind of broke yeah. it down for me, and I was like, oh, okay, that that's unfortunate. Like I went and I kind of looked mm -hmm. looked into it, and I was like, well, like it's unfortunate, but I'm I'm not gonna. I gave it a little bit of attention, but I was like, that's yeah. enough. And even in like in, um, whether it's educational, kind of like today, like getting some clips and things like that, I've. Mm -hmm. I've tried to like consume something, but then try to give myself like, okay, take five minutes. Even if you're on a long drive, like take 15 minutes. And it's like, you don't need to call somebody immediately right now. Or even if I try mm -hmm. to, and nobody picks up, I'm like, Hey, this is an opportunity to um, just sit, sit with the silence. Like the music doesn't have mm -hmm. to be playing the something doesn't have to be getting your attention and kind of going back to like when you were saying like, you needed maybe like the music or something to like tap into that other person. Mm -hmm. It's like, sometimes you do need those, those triggers, but like giving yourself even the opportunity to uh, discover how you can kind of tame your mind and to be like, okay, one, one thing that I learned over the last year is just observing your thoughts, like as you're thinking things, like you can kind of detach yourself a little bit to be like, that's not exactly me thinking it's like mm -hmm. the thoughts or the ideas are just kind of going by and I can just be like, Oh, okay. That, okay. That, that happened. Like mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't have to like jump on it like a, a wild horse that's loose and yeah. just like <laughs> hold on for dear life. Like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Like, yeah. It's like, that was like five years ago. Like yeah. <laughs> I, I resolved the issue. I know what to do about it now. It's like, it's not a concern. I'm not in an immediate mm -hmm. threat, but like just taking the time to like go through that process to be like, okay, am I offended by this situation? Why am I offended? Like, mm -hmm. what is that? What is that offense kind of doing to me? And like um, some something else someone gave me, it's like when you're feeling if you're feeling a little bit off, you can use like the halt method where they say, are you hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or mm -hmm. successful? And sometimes mm -hmm. it's like when you're in one of those states and you're just trying to figure out what's going on, you're like, oh, maybe I, maybe I need some food or mm -hmm. maybe I, I just need to like take a breath or it's mm -hmm. okay. Like maybe I'm missing my family or like maybe you may call maybe you may not but it's like huh okay i'm not it might not be like depression it might just be mm -hmm. like oh like i felt like this high high of like we did that podcast we did the thing and it's like yeah oh okay like this is the come down effect mm -hmm. and it's like you're gonna ride through the valley a little bit and eventually you're gonna climb back up another mountain but it's not it's not the end of the world it's not the time to go and like consume something like eat late like mm -hmm. sometimes I was doing I think two nights ago I I after like a long work day I was like let me get this uh burrito bowl from um mm -hmm. from so Mo's good. and by the oh, time well, I got okay. home I was like crap I was supposed to do an interview and I'm sitting here like scarfing it down and before yeah. we're gonna record I'm just sitting there thinking to myself like okay, just keep your composure, <laughs> like keep a poker face on. And I'm like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to maybe fast the next day, or just yeah. like the next couple of hours for my stomach to just like stop hurting. And it's like, yeah. and like at the end of it, I was like, well, okay, don't, don't beat yourself up too bad. It's like, okay, you overate, you're really hungry. Mm -hmm. Like your eyes are bigger than your stomach. And it just, it got away from you so yeah like tomorrow's another day it's, it's like you didn't day. die it's like the food kind of settled and like don't feel bad because you, i'm going through the routine of like, okay maybe I'll, I'll have like oatmeal for breakfast or i'll have a a biscuit and it's like, okay let me make sure i drink my water stay hydrated or just oh. 
go outside maybe i'll walk around in a circle or something just to be like okay let me calm my mind down but just kind of going through all those processes to be like huh it's not the end of the world no matter what my brain might be telling me or what the like what whatever the thing that might be triggering or the thing that may bring back that past memory it's like Mm -hmm. i know i've gotten the tools or at least even if i saw it in a video it's like oh okay like now this is an opportunity maybe for me to meditate and to be like i can deal with this like millions of people before me billions of people before me have lived and they've survived they've known or they haven't known like that this isn't this isn't the end it's like it's not it's not always that serious no it's it's not it's not it's there's always another there's always a full side of the glass i like Mm. i like to talk about glass half full a lot versus half empty yeah uh my my tiktok post yesterday was about a scenario where you were trapped in in the desert for about three or four days uh mm-hmm. all of a sudden you you stumble across this shack and a man opens the door and it's, it's cool inside and he sits you down at the table and he fixes you a half glass of water right mm-hmm. your mouth's cracked and bleeding you're thirsty you're about to die of thirst but you can't drink it because mm-hmm. all you can focus on is that empty half of it right there's a whole full side there to quench your thirst mm-hmm. right but all you can think about and all you can see because you ain't leaving with the light at that time and you've taken in whatever and it's making you think that that's the end mm. till you sit still and really think about it. And man's water in there, right? <laughs> that other end has everything I need to quench it. Yeah. A lot of times stuff don't go our way and we, we immediately, because we're so spoiled, we immediately think, oh, that's it, that's the end. Uh, I'm, I'm depressed now, that's the... I like to tell people, if you're watching anything that, I, that I've that uh, i produced, you're watching it on a cell phone, which tells me one thing. Is you, you got some data, you got a phone, you're probably sitting inside of a shelter somewhere, some kind of sheltered space, whether it's a car or a home. Mm-hmm. Uh, you probably got some running water. You probably got AC or heat. You probably got all this stuff that you could be happy about if you concentrated on it. But this yeah. one little thing happened, right? <laughs> and now in your mind, it's the end of the world. Right. right. Probably because you haven't been doing that self exercise. We talked about that mental exercise every day, telling yourself good things and practicing on knowing that I do have living out of a space of gratitude instead of out of a space of need and want. And I got to have and the consumer mindset is built from these devices and marketing over over years. Right. Yeah. Uh, you just said it. Millions of people did way more with less before we were ever thought of, you know what I'm saying? They didn't even have the resources we have, but they ended up living happily and and being able to live a fulfilling life to them, right? Because success even is is defined in your mind. You Mm -hmm. define that, right? But the thing about it is what we take in, we say we don't watch the news and, and you just found out about the submarine thing, you got to be careful because what you take in, just like breathing or eating, mm-hmm. that mind's going to digest it and it's going to end up coming back out somehow. So you're going to have to process it. And yeah. that's why it's very important to watch and monitor what you take in on purpose because uh, I've watched I've watched some of the clips. I hadn't watched the whole episode yet, but mm-hmm. I see that you have a very diverse uh, uh, cast of members, people that you bring on, mm-hmm. right? And if we watch the news, especially after anything happens, a police shooting or anything like that, you would think that those conversations that you're having with people from all different walks of life and ethnicities, the news will have you think that that's impossible, that these right. conversations don't happen because this side hates this side and that side hates this one. And, yeah. you know, a uh, uh, Republican or Democrat, white or black, whatever, all yeah. these boxes that they like to <laughs> try to fit us in, you yeah. would think that everybody was at war with each other. And that's why I don't take it in because it's an agenda pushed and, and the elite on the, the, uh, the networks and he who controls imagery controls the minds to me, imagery and chanting, what you watch on that TV, mm-hmm. what you listen to music wise, a lot, a lot of times can, they can alter their mind yeah. like majorly, you know what I'm saying? So being mindful of what you take in is a very important thing, man. And then just like you said, being able to stop, breathe, right? 
Because the word <laughs> breathing actually soothes the spirit. Because the, the, the word breath uh, actually comes from the word spirar or spirit, right? It's actually, they actually mean the same thing historically. Okay. So you have, you being able to stop and breathe in, mm-hmm. right? Kind of settles a bunch of stuff. As you think about any chaotic time you've been in when stuff's happening, somebody will tell you, hey, just calm down, breathe, breathe. And if you can catch that breath, yeah. right, all of a sudden you, you get a little calmer, it gives you a little, and then you're able to think, yeah, right? Because it, it kind of calms that mind down. And now you can make the decision because all this stuff we've been talking about, the fact that you and I can be in two different states looking at each other, talking, having this conversation is going to get recorded and edited and put out and all kinds of people can see it, right? Mm-hmm. That came from somebody's from somebody's mind, right? All the all the bad stuff we've talked about today and all the great stuff. AI, calculators, all that stuff came from this. Yeah. And then we push it as people. So how important is that, does that make us? How how powerful is this thing that sits between the ears? Right. So I like to say if you got a person that's able to make the right decision, you should covet that person. Not because of the right decision they made, but because of all the hundreds and millions of decisions they didn't make to make this right one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because like you said, <laughs> that mind's racing. And my dark side says some crazy stuff sometimes. <laughs> if, if there was a, I heard they were working on some kind of AI feature that can read nope. thoughts or something. No. Nope. And, and I'm like, you don't want to. <laughs> no. Nope. The, the people you look at, you would <laughs> so you never look at them the same again because <laughs> the stuff that goes on in that thing yeah. and, and the ability for you to be able to reach up and nope, 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 that's it. And grab that. That's a skill. Mm. But it's something you have to build over time. You have to exercise it. You have to be able to, you you have to have dealt with some traumas and dealt with some stuff to be able to sit and meditate in a split second enough to say, no, that ain't it. That ain't it. That's it. Yeah. Let me do this. If you got people like that in your life, man, you better, <laughs> you better cover them. You better kind of, kind of study them a little bit because yeah. They they are they are sifting through a lot of bull crap to get to that. <laughs> There's a lot that goes through that head. <laughs> yeah. Cause this is the the biggest computer, the, the most intricate computer you can ever think of is this, because somebody mind created that. And then we've just taken it and it keeps evolving and evolving and evolving. But it that AI stuff and these computers will never be more powerful than that. Yeah. Right. So focus on that. Focus on your mind building it man telling yourself great things about self i get up in the morning mm-hmm. i give my reverence <clears throat> i uh make up my side of the bed first mm-hmm. and i do that because i understand that sometimes in order to get something right or in order to do what you need to do you got to mess some stuff up right mm-hmm. so i had to, i had to mess it up but i'm able to clean it up yeah. If I start my day that way, I know that anything I encounter that may get messed up, I got the ability to clean it up. And some of it may have to get out of place because you can't make up your mind or get stuff in order if it ain't mm-hmm. out of order first. Right. Mm-hmm. So I do that. And there's a it's it's not on purpose, but my wife thought these little heart-shaped mirrors were cute. And as soon as I stand up and I look over, it's right there. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so now I'm looking at myself in the in a heart-shaped image and I begin to tell myself, you the man. Whatever you encounter today, you're going to knock it out of the park. And I go in there, I get my hygiene together. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing I do on the way out is when I do grab this device, is look up something funny. Yeah. Because laughter <clears throat> helps me not take the stuff so serious and also releases certain certain endorphins that make you a little more bubbly. <laughs> like it takes, yeah, yeah. takes stresses off of you, right? And that's how I start my day every day on purpose, right? Right. Uh, that's part of my routine. My routine may look totally different from some other people, but that routine is very, very important to set the mind because all that other stuff we did, the hygiene stuff, mm-hmm. the the stopping to get gas for your vehicle and all this kind of stuff, you, you're you making sure all that stuff is up to par. Right. Better make sure that's up to par <laughs> because that's yeah. what's going to lead the day ultimately. If you have a, if you, if you start your day on the wrong mindset, you'll have a flat. Mm-hmm. And you'll let it ruin your whole day, forgetting that you got a spare mm-hmm. and a jack, right? <laughs> because you let that mind go 
Right. And it's the end of the world again. Right. <laughs> it's this. Oh, my guy got a flat. I'm going to be late. I'm on. It's text your supervisor or whoever and let them know, hey, I got a flat. Mm-hmm. You can even take a picture of it if need be. It'll take yeah. you 10 minutes to change it and you'll be back on your way. Even if you have an accident, you're not majorly injured. Uh, you'll forget for you got insurance. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and you can get a rental and mm-hmm. you got roadside. You forget all that stuff because you, your mind. Right. You hadn't been doing that mental exercise and you're still leading with dark more than light. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's how important it is, man. Just the importance of self, the importance of, of, of talking to yourself and being able to meditate and strengthening that mind and exercising it, man. It's a it's a beautiful thing. I only share with people out of personal experience, though. I'm not talking mm-hmm. about nothing I read. I didn't look it up on, on Pinterest. I, <laughs> I pulled it. <laughs> Hey, Pinterest isn't the, bad. Pinterest isn't it's bad. It's not bad at all, but that's not where I got it from. I'm putting right, it right. from from here and there, man. And and uh again, we just I'm just cooking it up. And yeah. if you smell it and you think you want to consume it, it's out there for you. I'm not trying to push or pull anybody. It's right. just out there, man, and, and trying to live through my purpose and my gift. And I salute you for doing the same, man, and uh bringing those everyday people on, letting them talk about life. Because one thing about it, 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 it's a lot more of us than there are Ray Lewis's or mm-hmm. Michael Jordan's or LeBron's, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody don't get to experience all the stuff that they have. But at the same time, they're also just us, they're just yeah. human, right? Right. And so bringing everyday people on and letting them know how they navigate, man, that's, that's helpful. We're doing our part mm-hmm. in the fight of bringing light because there's so much darkness on the internet and so much negative stuff that gets that gets uh pushed out in front yeah. right and the kids can grab it because it's shiny and it looks good and seems cool and uh for our people man it's it's somehow we've adopted all this detrimental stuff as our culture right and uh it's well, leading I mean, down a, a right very I mean, st- even for huh? that even for that i i personally just kind of the way I've started pushing back is to stop reinforcing it in a way like I've stopped rehearsing stories that are like, Oh, this is the, I'm like, no, it doesn't have to be like, I'm not going to choose that today. (laughs) And it's like, um, when I find something that's positive, something that's good, I try Mm -hmm. to share that when I find something that's funny, I'll try to share that because it's like, it, it's encouraging when someone, some, I think it's like an opportunity to encourage someone when when they say they haven't seen this or they haven't seen that and I can look mm-hmm. over and just be like oh, okay like we're not we're we're clearly not looking at the same thing where mm-hmm. um they may be going through something and like you said it's good to meet people where they're at and kind of encouraging them to be like hey just remember you can log off like it'll yep. be there when you get back like all mm-hmm. those notifications and whatnot there they'll they'll wait for you it's like yeah they'll put yeah. it'll be um what is it like the last call or something or it's like limited time only and then yeah. next week limited time <laughs> only it's like yeah yeah it seems like to be limited every year around the same time it's like you'll be just okay walking. but just like yeah. <laughs> just take just taking that mental break for yourself and like you said with your breath and your spirit being able to just breathe and like start with your routine and even if you have a bad routine it's like each each day each hour each time that you breathe again you get a chance to like start over to be like okay these five things didn't go right but instead of making that the focus it's like okay what can i do about my situation to improve it and let me let me focus on that like i don't have to get into it with anyone i can sit by myself i can approach someone that's calm someone that's like like you said if you if you see those people you watch how people move if you're confused about where you're going and it can be very like it'll just kind of jump out to you like oh like try this because it's like when you actually look for something and you give yourself an opportunity they say like when the student is ready the teacher will come and it's Mm -hmm. not a it's not a you got to run out and run a thousand miles this that and the other but just like taking the time to appreciate your breath, appreciate your spirit and just be like, huh, like it's not all bad. It doesn't all come to an end. It's like, maybe I just got to log off for a minute. 
come nope. back, <laughs> check it in a few hours, check it tomorrow. Let me go see what somebody else is looking at. Maybe they're having a better outcome. And like, there's more to yep. life than than just what's on the screen. And um, there's <laughs> trees, me. there's grass, there's what's under the grass, what's over the grass. Like just even in the storms, like the the rain, the hell, the, all it. that. There's yeah. there's beauty in that. Like like you're yep. saying, like people wouldn't know what's going on in farmland unless you took a plane you're like what are all those circles down there it's yeah. like <laughs> it took like just spreading crap and mm -hmm. it took a whole process to like build that up but it, it's a beautiful thing to have this conversation with you and even as we're talking i'm like we didn't even talk about anything really job related because it's like oh it's like we're we're just yeah. we're humans <laughs> having a conversation and it's like yeah oh this is cool like you didn't have to like be like <laughs> okay let me go this part and this part and this part mm -hmm. this part it's like no it just flowed and i'm like man yeah. that's that's pretty cool yeah so it's, it's organic exchanging the energies man that's what we really are is uh is energy if you learn to lead with that light energy man and you you meet another light energy it's always a synergistic type of effect and then uh the old adage iron sharpens iron right yeah. uh, the sharpening and the sharpener both changing at the same time right so we, yes sir we, we've done some sharpening man i've learned some things I'm, i hope i taught some things uh you taught me as well we are teachers whether we like it or not right somebody's always watching and uh figuring something out when they're watching you because like i said their computer's scanning at all times <laughs> their mind's working <laughs> yeah and hopefully uh us getting together taught somebody something today man and, I really enjoyed it. Uh, yes, sir. I'm going to continue to to I, like I told you, I subscribe to your to your channel, so we'll continue to watch. I listen to since I I've gotten into podcasting and, mm -hmm. and uh, this video side of things isn't the actual podcast part, but since I've gotten the <laughs> podcasting and recording conversation, I watch a lot of just to learn, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, trust me when I tell you I have I, I saw. I watched uh, maybe five to 10 minutes of about four of the episodes so far. Mm -hmm. Went to your website and all that stuff. But trust me, I'll be watching and listening. I'm always trying to learn. So I'm trying to pick something else up to add to my toolbox Yeah. Uh, for me so I can help somebody else, right? It all comes back to service at the end of the day. And uh, I wish you the best in, in everything that you're trying to do with this, whatever it is. I hope that whatever success is in your mind you defined it though yes, as <laughs> success you know what i'm saying because uh again social media and, and I'm, I'm a big fan of like million dollars worth of game and some of these other podcasts mm -hmm. and they get millions and millions of views i'm i'm well up to where we probably average about fifteen thousand on facebook but i look at my youtube sometimes and i might get <laughs> i'm like <laughs> eh. <laughs> the, guy. Hey, the important thing is that you're you're encouraging people and you're you're uh you're making a connection if you got yeah. strangers coming to you and just opening up it's like you're affecting somebody oh yeah that's the main thing so the same advice you just gave me same i give you man and keep doing yeah. what you're doing I looked up and I was like place. five, fifteen, and I was like, you know what? Fifteen people looked up. I'm like, that's what's <laughs> up. Scroll on IG. I'm like, hey, respect. Because it, it's yeah. like on the one hand, I was thinking, maybe I want to be like those people. And then on the other hand, I'm like, oh, maybe I'm being arrogant. It's like, oh, it doesn't matter. But it's well, like e either way, I'm like, you know, when I kind of put it on the, the perspective and like going into my mind and being like, hmm, somebody took the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, this is the thing. They they started somewhere too. Yeah. And uh the more we push it, the more you go all in behind it, it's right. gonna turn into something bigger. Yeah. And then this is the thing that one episode that finally gets a million views, automatically people have to start going back. You think about a new artist that you found, mm -hmm. you found them because of one song, right? right? And right. then you're like, well, let me see what else they have. And then you go find five or six more songs that you like. Yeah. And then after that, you start to pick up everything they put out. Right. But right. it was that one that got you to them. So I keep that mindset, staying consistent, uh, putting it out. Man, I've had people, both of us, again, I've had people call us and tell us, man, I was about to do something crazy last night. Mm. And I watched the episode. And I only watched 30 seconds. Something you said is the reason I'm here today. You a million views, a million dollars, billion dollars. 
Mm-hmm. That can't add up to that. You know what I'm saying? The fact that, that somebody may have may have been thinking about no longer being here, something you said mm-hmm. actually saved them. Like that to me, I'm success, I'm 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 experienced success already. I won't say successful because that means I'm satisfied, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Just because with the full part means it's ain't nowhere else to go. But <laughs> <laughs> we experienced the success and, and so are you, man. And I appreciate you again for having me on, man. It's been an honor. Yes, and sir. a pleasure. And you keep on going, man. I'll do the same. Well, d- before you go, definitely let the people again know where they can find you and just what's <clears> coming <throat> up uh, with the remainder okay. of the year. So so uh, we're on Spotify, Ghana Podcast, uh, uh, Audible, uh, under the Lit Code, the Lit Code Podcast. Uh, also on Facebook under that same name. YouTube under the same name. Uh so and and then we're working on the website now, the litcode.com. We do mm-hmm. on the domain there is a website up, but it's not completely finished yet. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have all the info on it. Uh we're we're uh open for speaking engagements. We're open for like I said, I write I write content. So if you mm-hmm. don't want AI to do it for you, you can <laughs> reach out to me at the lit motivators at gmail.com or info at the lit code.com. I also do have my book coming out July the 7th. Mm. Uh, I'm big on the number seven. I love the number seven. It's the number of completion. So yeah. that's seven, seven, 20, 23. If you add up the numbers in that last 2023, that's seven, seven, seven. <laughs> so that's why I picked the day. Uh, <laughs> now my, my actual life number is eight. I, I do like the number eight too, but I like the number seven a little more. But anyway, yeah. Uh, this book, if you noticed, I talk about self a lot. Now, certain certain ways I'm going to refer to to self and myself and what you should refer to yourself. It may be a little provocative because mm-hmm. by definition, I'm saying I'm telling you to understand your God of your world. If you can see the you is in all caps, mm-hmm. not to say that I believe I'm God, like the big, big guy, <laughs> but mm-hmm. no matter what, what. Uh, religion you practice I'm sure that it says something about the kingdom of God existing within the individual Mm. and if the kingdom of God exists within you then you are godly right (laughs) and all of us come together to make one big God in my mind the way I look at it Mm -hmm. but anyway I said it earlier you get to choose which one you follow God or the devil right Right. and you if it's seven billion people in this world and I ask them what does God mean to you? I'm probably going to get 7 billion different answers. If, mm-hmm. if everybody could draw a picture with their mind, it would be different, mm-hmm. right? And guess who formulates that thought? You do. So <laughs> just getting you back to the power of self and how important it is for you to look at self as something first, because in your world, right, the world that goes dark when you close your eyes, you're like the biggest entity in it, <laughs> you know, nothing else. You're like you're the, what you eat, uh, somebody else won't crap it later. Jay Z said, it. "What you eat won't make what they eat won't make me." You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> just getting you back to the importance of self, man, is what that book's gonna be all about. Uh, it's gonna be available on Amazon, man, and uh, that's what I got coming up. Like I said, Edgar has speaking engagements coming up all over the place. He just left Baltimore yeah. a week or so ago. We'll be putting that content out soon. Where well, he went back and talked to some of the Ravens uh, rookies. As they were coming in, uh, mm-hmm. and then he he introduced them to lit illuminated and thought we're working on some transition programs for people leaving sports mm-hmm. and or military, trying to ingratiate themselves back into normal civilian life. Uh, yeah. you now how hard that can be, man. And and we're just trying to be beacons of light. That's that's about it. And meet people where they are, illuminate the path to where they want to go. Yes, that's sir. what we got coming, man. And on that note, I'll, I'll ask you the last question, tying into mm-hmm. the first question: Are you still who you said you were? Always, and I'm, and I'm, I'm that, and I'm continuing to be that just by living. Right, the more I experience, even this this whole podcast that we just recorded, or we're in the act of recording right now, mm-hmm. is a new experience that will build something. Right, yeah. so now it's a part of me. <laughs> right, so I think all of us are, are continuing to be. If you didn't give that answer, if you adopt the answer that I gave, mm-hmm. 
when he asks his last question, you'll always be able to say yes, because you just continue to add on to that ball of experiences, good and bad, right? Yeah. That's going to make up who you are and how you react to them will eventually make up who you are, man. So, yeah, yeah, I am. Awesome. Pleasure having you on the podcast. Yeah, man, same here, man.